What is up guys and welcome back. Just a quick note before we get started is that I'm most definitely not done with Red Dead Redemption. I'm going to be doing videos on that for as long as I possibly can. So this video is going to have three trophies actually. The first one being the artifacts one, which is probably why you're here. The second one is going to be the fitness club. And the third one is going to be stealing from the Robo Shack, which is the tea leaf. All right, let's get straight into it. So the first area you get to with the artifact is the boombox in the east outpost and now there's going to be links in the description to all of these because i'm going to let the audio play after they pick up their items because it can be quite funny so if you want to skip those audios just use the description and pop to each one fairly quickly look at this beauty the ancients left a lot of ugly junk behind but once in a while you see something like this wonder what these buttons are for i wouldn't touch it if i were you I'm not kidding around. Lay off the buttons. What's up your butt? That's a bomb, all right. They used to call it a boom box. Touch that red button, and it goes boom. Don't be pretending you know what any of this crap is. We'll bring it back to the Ark and show it to Prip. Ask him what it's worth on the black market. Yeah, so some of them are actually quite funny later on, but you can skip that, like I said, using the description. Okay, next up, we're going to go to Hammond's Cabin. And in here, we're going to find the Far Looker. So this is from the entrance. We're going to run all the way up and grab it next to the cabin up top. You can see it in the distance there. Quite a large item. Hopefully one of my Christmas presents as well. This is Hammond's Far Looker. Let's bring it back to prep before the ghouls take it. That name is all wrong. It should be a smaller fire, because when I looked into it, everything became smaller and more distant. Amazing what the ancients could make. Amazing indeed. All right, so the next one is going to be the hipster fruit tester, and this is going to be in the fallen angel area. Right over there in the east. Follow the path, and then we're going to veer off in a second. If anyone knows what the question mark is on the map, because I've played this game three times now, and the second and third times I was incredibly thorough, searching every possible area, found a couple of enemies I didn't kill before, but went through them each twice, almost three times, and still are nowhere near enough experience to get another 16 or 17 levels that I need. So I have no idea what's going on there. an image of a rot pair. This looks like... Uh... A testing contraption for fruit. I heard stories about singing fruit that could make music. Is this somehow related? Why the hell would anybody need to test fruit? You either eat it or you sling it at some bozo's head. A bozo like you. Right, next up is going to be the power brick in the Sea Titans area. Now, this is the exit to the area, not the entrance, but it is part of the storyline, and you have to go there anyway to get to Iza Infala. And this is going to be the location of the evac control key as well, and it allows you to go back to the beginning of this stage and open that gate you couldn't, as well as a couple of other gates, I think, as well. But I'm going to be doing videos on all the trophies for this game, and eventually when I figure out how to get the the experience done, I will play it again. I'm busy talking to the devs currently. So you might as well grab this key right here on your way past. And you can head back to the beginning of the stage, like I said. And here we have the power brick. Hey, I've seen these before. You need to lick the top to see if it still works. The ancients used these to run lights and machines. Prip will give us a good deal on this one. It still holds power. Ducks. Don't play with that thing. We're bringing it back to prep. I can't feel my tongue. Hey, it's not funny. I think it probably would be funny seeing a duck put his tongue on that. Okay, next is going to be the House of Bones, and this is going to be the defib. Yeah, so touching again on that question mark, if anyone has any idea what's happening with this, I'll have looked everywhere online. And I've seen only one person that has actually achieved that, and I've messaged them, and they've said nothing. And some people are saying you only need to max out three weapons, some say you need to max out five weapons. I've maxed out eight weapons, and I still haven't got that achievement. 
and there just isn't enough experience to get these characters to their max level. So there's got to be something we're missing here. Maybe finishing it on Iron Mutant will unlock something. But uh, right now, I have no idea what to do. Okay, so you could go down the left-hand side at the start of the stage, and you'll get to the same area. But it's going to be in this building, chilling on the desk in the back corner. Yeah, so I hope uh, you're enjoying this game as much as I am. It is very similar, obviously, to the XCOM series, which is why I love it so much. There we have it. Defibrillator. There's instructions to use this on somebody who's lying down. Maybe something to aid sleep or to relax. Oh, this sounds relaxing. Maybe I'll use it to unwind when I get back to the Ark. Right, next up is going to be the cooler box. And that is going to be Isa and Fala, so the next stage across. The next area at least. And I really hope they do expand on this. I hope they have lots of DLC on the way. Because it just seems like there is something missing. And uh, playing the game three times, you think you would have figured it out by now. But I still have, I'm absolutely clueless as to why there isn't enough enemies to get experience. And I've gone back, like I was saying before to all the enemies that I left. I made a, made a note of them. I went back and killed them. And still I'm far away from anything resembling the max achievement for that uh, their abilities. Okay, so quite a trick, but uh, we're getting to the cooler box in the end and that'll be worth the trip. Although I think this is more a organ transplant box because they say there's blood in it or maybe there's just blood on the beers, who knows. There it is. Looks like you can keep stuff in it. Maybe we can trade this with Prip. This looks like one of those cooling boxes. I've seen many, but none in a functional state such as this. I think the ghouls kept souvenirs cold in these boxes. There's still some blood inside. And remember, guys, you can skip the, the audio or the conversations using the description. Okay, next up is the L generator. This is going to be the horned devil. Must be one of the first ones I recorded. Decided to do a guide on this almost halfway through the game. Okay, you're going to get to this little cabin following the path. And we're going to head straight past that over this bridge. There are my companions. Now this one actually gives you four. Some of them give you more than one, but this one gives you the most four. And you can turn that in at Pip's place. I think it's Pip's place. Or the only bar in town, if you will. And this is also the area where you get the... I'm not sure what it's called, but uh, you power up the robot. And I'll be doing a guide on that today as well. Okay, next up is the smelting tool. Or melting, should I say. On the scraplands. And this is the one I actually picked up last, uh, which is why I get the trophy with this because it was so damn small. And all the other ones, they're glowing quite a vicious ye uh, yellow, quite a vicious purple. But um, this one, I don't know, for some reason just skipped me. But it's going to be in this garage right here. Just next to this car. Oh no, wait, this is the one I did find. Sorry, it was the uh, the grog mixer, the one that I couldn't find. That is the melting tool. He's big enough to see. This looks like something a gearhead could use. It must be for cutting or melting metal. Makes sense, I suppose. I've seen one of these in Hammond's workshop. It's for melting two pieces of metal together. Don't stare at the light. It will blind you. So this one is going to be part of the fitness club trophy and you get to the storyline where you meet Lux. This will happen ine inevitably and he will send you to the, the zone right next to it there, the unenlightened, to pick up a key and then you can head back to him. Well, this is his area right here. You can't miss this massive area. So head over to the unenlightened and I'm going to show the map again in case someone used the shortcuts in the description. This is going to be chilling in the center of the camp here.
There it is right here. So once you've grabbed that and destroyed everyone in the area and then obviously searched the hell out of it, we're going to head back to Lux. Now this is where with the storyline you can do two things. You can go up and give him the key and everything's fine and dandy. But that's not what you want to do. You want to head back to the back of his compound and unlock the the door. And down on the bottom there he's going to have guys on bikes that are actually powering his compound. And also you need the experience. So I've actually got a video as well on the the emergence of this. When you come back out, everything just goes tits up. Very difficult. But head back over here, grab your fitness club trophy, as well as Lux's lights, which is the main reason why you're here. It's going to be in the top right-hand corner of the room there. Now, there's no audio on this one, because I probably had my headphones on, and it's fucking cold. So they were probably keeping me warm. But once you've sorted that out, head to the top right and grab the lights. No point in letting them talk because you can't hear them, so I'm going to skip straight to the grog mixer. In the grog den, you will find the grog mixer. Now this is the one I said that I couldn't find. It's very, very small. I mean, I must have come past this place more than three times. But I was looking for the purple glow or my focus was elsewhere, I don't know. But this is why I got my trophy popped on this one. And then there's... Just one more after this, the Holy Books of Fixing. No, there's two more. The Commode and the Holy Book of Fixing. Okay, this is going to be in the large warehouse directly in front. I'm going alone. Just behind these casts right here. There it is there. See the light? Very difficult to see. Just looks like another bottle. There's the old school. It stinks like an old grog mug, but it's a nozzle. All right, next up is the Holy Books of Fixing, which is the penultimate one. Now, this is going to be a large church in the center of this area, Spear of Heaven. So very difficult to miss this. It's quite a large area, which is why I didn't run from the beginning or the exit, but uh, difficult to miss this massive building. Let's just do a quick whip around here. In here, you're going to find this trapdoor. That's going to take you down to a whole lot of stuff. There are no enemies down here on the level that I played on. And the book of fixing is going to be right there. That's actually a point. Maybe if you play on a harder difficulty, you get more experience. And you have to play it on hard to get that achievement of maxing out their abilities. I haven't spoke of such a bug. This was placed in such a way that indicates the Nova Sect held it in high regard. Something about disk drives and saving your homework. Fascinating, I'm sure. All right, guys, one more to go. Now, this is the Robo Shack. I destroyed the Robo part of that sign. Um, this is going to be in the Forbidden City. It's going to be right at the exit to the next area. So go to the end of the Forbidden City and you can't miss this. In here, you're going to find the keyboard, and as well as you'll get the tea leaf trophy by taking any of the scrap that's in here, and there is a lot. Robot scrap, unfortunately not weapon scrap. Well, there might be a couple weapon scraps, but you'll get your trophy taking anything off this area. And there it is right there. This looks old, even by the ancient standards. They really made a lot of odd little things, didn't they? All right, guys, that's going to bring us to the end of the video. Hope you found it informative. Please smash that like button if you did. Uh, plenty more guides on the way, including an extensive online guide for Red Dead about the hunting and perfect pelts on cougars and bears and stuff like that. And back to this video, this is the place you turn in your artifacts, and this is what you should do all the time, including the sale price decrease, which is the most effective one in the top right. Alright guys, I want to say thanks for watching, and I want to catch you on the next one.